So hi, I'm Catherine. I'm a senior civil engineering and environmental engineering student. And today I'm talking with Christina, who is a water resources engineer. And Christina has a BS in civil engineering and a master's in environmental science and engineering. And she's been working as a consulting engineer for about 17 years. All right, so the first question is, what made you decide to work in water resources? So that is a bit of a long story, but I'll make it brief. <laughs> I majored in civil engineering at Penn State, and um, my, my focus was in structural engineering. So I, I took all of the structural classes. I took concrete design and steel design, and I definitely wanted to be a structural engineer when I graduated. So I took a first job at a very large company and they kind of had me rotating throughout all of their various sections because there wasn't a ton of work when I graduated. So I got to taste a little bit of each field within civil engineering kind of. I did some transportation work. Um, I also did bridge inspection work. I did highway design and rail yard design, just a bunch of different things. One day, a water resources engineer came up to me and she said, I really need this grading done for a stream restoration plan. And I kind of shrugged and thought, well, I never say no to anything. So yeah, sure, give that to me. I did the grading for her. And then the next thing I know, she asked me to run a hydraulic model for her, at least cut the cross section so they could run the HECRAS model. And I thought, yeah, I can do that too. And <laughs> I ended up really liking it. So I got sucked in via stream restoration. And then as my career progressed, I decided to focus more on that and leaned away from structural engineering. And what type of work do you currently do now as an engineer? I wear many hats in my current position. I've progressively taken on larger roles within the company every time I've switched companies. So uh, I started out at that large company and I went to more of a medium sized firm. And now I'm at a smaller firm. When I made this last switch, it uh, included office management, business development, marketing, but also being a technical mentor and still doing technical work. So right now I do stormwater management, engineering, I still work on stream restoration projects. I do construction inspection of those designs. So stream restoration and stormwater management, I inspect on a construction site. I also do watershed planning. Right now I'm working on a really cool project for a school campus and it includes a high school, a middle school, and an elementary school. And we plan what their stormwater management practices could be, best management practices could be. So it is a variety of work and uh, it does provide like a large, a, a broad scope of, of different water resources projects. And then is a water resources engineer the same as an environmental engineer? It is not. <laughs> um, so our, the company that I work for now, uh, they do environmental work and I didn't even know what all of that included before I worked here. <laughs> so that includes everything from what I do to permitting work and hazardous waste work, wastewater treatment plants, geo-environmental work. So it's, it's a really broad range environmental engineering is. Water resources focuses more specifically on on surface surface water and and also drainage. All right, and what are the different specialties within water resources? Oh, so I did talk about this a little bit. Uh, a lot of them I do. I do stormwater management, stream restoration. Uh, there's also floodplain management. So that's starting to become a big deal lately, considering the whole climate change discuss discussion. So a water resources engineer will build a large scale model to um, model flood flooding flooding areas. So uh, I'm sure they have one, a new one for the New Orleans area. I know that FEMA has done a lot more uh, updated mapping based off of updated modeling from water resources engineers. Uh, some of my friends who are water resources engineers work for WSSC, which is a, a 
kind of like a pseudo government, uh, but also privately owned utility company, and they provide water and wastewater to to residents and businesses. So uh, there are a variety of things within water resources, and it's definitely all different, but based on kind of like the same basic skills, which are hydrology and hydraulics and subsurface flow. So I know you touched on this a little bit already, but what kind of projects do water resources engineers work on? Oh yeah, I did touch on this. So um, like I just said, I feel kind of repetitive, <laughs> but I, I guess I didn't really get into exactly what the projects are. So a stream restoration project is usually implemented either because the stream is eroding and it might be affecting a local properties. Uh, that's what a lot of what I did previously. I worked for county government and small municipalities where residential properties were being endangered because the stream was eroding away their property. So we would do a stream restoration and stabilize the banks and implement a bunch of different tools to keep the stream banks from eroding. Uh, another reason why stream restoration is, is implemented and used in areas is to gain credit towards uh, TMDL uh, permits and MS4 permits. Um, stormwater management is pretty much how it sounds. You know, it rains. It's raining here right now. So uh, all that water has to go somewhere and it needs to be treated before it goes into our general system and then out into the bay. So we use various techniques like uh, bioswales and rain gardens, things like that to treat the water, but also capture it so it doesn't uh, erode downstream. And how much field work is typically involved with water resources projects and what do you do if you're in the field? I always get that question because people love to be outside and I do too. It's, it's a little tricky sometimes though because the sites are not always the greatest sites to be uh, trampling around in. Um, usually when a project starts, there's a lot of field work involved because you need to assess the site. And then over the lifetime of the project, which is if it's a normal size project, a year to two years, depending on permitting time. Uh, you'll go out to the site with permitting agencies once or twice and, and then again out for construction. So depending on how large the site is, you know, that's how long you're gonna be in the field, but it's mainly at the beginning of the project. Um, if you have a lot of projects, you could end up being in the field a lot. Uh, when I was younger, they used to send younger staff out in the field. So I was out in the field more at the beginning of my career, not so much now, which is kind of sad. But there are areas in environmental engineering that you could be out in the field more. Uh, one of them is wetland delineations. So if uh, a wetland delineation is mainly performed for permitting reasons for the Army Corps and our wetland delineators, that's pretty much all they do. So they're out in the field a lot. We also have people who look at rare, threatened, and endangered species. It also falls under more environmental engineering rather than water resources engineering. You have to have certifications to do those surveys, but they're often in the field and they get really busy. They're out there pretty much all the time. They, you come in and you do your reports and then you're out in the field again. So um, as far as water resources engineering, I'd say like 25% of the time, 20% of the time, if you're wetland delineation or rare threatened endangered RTE surveys, more, more often than not, all right, and then what kind of professional qualifications do you need to be a water resources engineer? So I would definitely recommend undergrad degree, <laughs> a bachelor's in science. <laughs> Mine was in civil engineering. Uh, I've heard of others having biology uh, majors and still kind of migrating into water resources or, or the things that I do, which is stream restoration. There are some people who have an underground undergrad degree in environmental science and again in biology for, for stream restoration and that's their focus which is which is good uh, the one big thing that I I did early in my career was get my PE license uh, which is your professional engineers license it's required to stamp any kind of engineering plans, you need a PE license. And to do that, you have to have a qualifying undergrad, a qualifying bachelor's degree, and then also you need to take your EIT. All right, what about any sort of like LEED certifications? 
Are those necessary? I know people who have gotten those. Uh, I don't know that they're necessary, but I do know that it would be helpful to go through that kind of schooling, I guess you could say. It's, it's a next level of studying and it does help to have extra credentials because it means that you're willing to learn extra things and, and go the extra mile and always ready to explore n new solutions to your everyday water resources problem, so. All right, now we're gonna kind of swing back to like you and your job in particular. So what's your favorite part about your job? Not every day is the same. <laughs> So every day is completely different. Some days I'm working on only marketing items and trying to win work. And that's com something completely different that they don't really teach you in school. If, well, they didn't teach me with my undergrad in civil engineering, you know. So um, it, it was a challenge at first to roll into that, which I love a good challenge. And then it, it also makes things variable. But even if you're doing water resources work every single day, day in, day out, it's never the same. And it's never the same problem, which means it's never the same solution. So with me, I don't get really bored with it because it's always something new. And what has been a favorite project to work on? Oh, I have a few. <laughs> I have a few, but I think one of my favorite ones was a very, very small stream restoration project. I mean, it couldn't have been more than 200 linear feet. And it really was the receiving waters at an outfall. And it just looked terrible. There were tons of invasive species and it was right next to a property owner's house. And he was very upset. Just, I remember the first time I met him, he, he was completely outraged. I bought this expensive house and look, I'm not gonna have any yard soon. and Every time I was out in the field and talking with him, I built more of a relationship and, and, and our conversations got a little easier, you know, and so I was working for a county government and everyone got involved in it because it just so happened that that small little tract of land had all this permitting with it, you know, so the Army Corps was involved and forest people were involved. It was uh, lots of permitting for just 200 linear feet, but the project came out beautifully. It, I couldn't even believe my own ability in <laughs> design for it. And then the contractors who executed my design were great. I got to be out there for construction as well to do the inspection. So I was there from this all the way study phase, all the way through construction. And the homeowner was so excited and so happy with what it looked like in the end. And he wrote a letter of commendation to the county and the county wrote, wrote up an article in their county uh, newsletter about the project. And this was from my previous company. My previous company uses it on one of their banners for marketing at conferences. So it's, it was the smallest project with a, so many challenges and hoops to jump through and it turned out great. All right, and then we're gonna kind of segue into getting like a job within the water resources field. So yeah. what was your job search like in getting your first engineering job? So I think that I was probably a lucky one. Uh, well, not the luckiest of people. A lot of the people that I went to school with had parents who were engineers or friends of the family who were engineers, so they were able to find a lead into an internship, you know, easier than me. And then from an internship, you can, you can then launch yourself into a first job. I didn't have any connections into this career. You know, my parents did totally opposite of what, what I do. And so I had to really hustle to find that first internship. But what I did was I joined a professional society on campus, ASE, and Again, I have no no button. So someone said, well, will you be our secretary? And sure, why not? <laughs> I can totally do that. And also there was free pizza. So I was all about it. Um, and we had someone come in and talk from a, a large engineering company. And we started, her and I started chatting. And one thing led to another, she offered me uh, a co-op 
at the company and th they're the ones who I ended up going to for my, my full-time job. But I do consider myself lucky. The, the first internship that I got, I really hustled. I mean, I sent out so many resumes over and over again. I tailored them to each specific company. It took a lot of time, but it was worth it because in the end I did get an internship with that company. And so with two internships under my belt, I graduated in a really bad recession, <laughs> but I managed four offers and a lot of the people that I graduated with didn't have any. So the moral of the story is just try to, even in college, net network yourself and make sure that even the littlest things are kind of buttoned up it, resume wise for sure. Um, so that's ever since then, uh, jobs have been not even by really looking, uh, mostly because I've stuck with that. AS, I've stuck with ASC volunteering a lot of my time and I've learned how to network and I've done a lot of networking through that professional society. And that's how I ended up with, with each of my jobs actually. So besides ASCE, do you recommend any other like ways to network on a college campus? Hmm, that's a good question. I used to volunteer uh, just randomly <laughs> uh, I, and not necessarily on college campus. I used to volunteer in my hometown um, for just clean like days and things like that. And you meet a lot of different people that way. And I think that that's also helpful because when I was in college, I did have my doubts. You know, you're going through all of your classes and you think to yourself like, am I really going to use differential equations when I graduate? Because I don't want to do that. Like, that, do not sign me up for that job. I'm out of here. Um, but it's good meeting people and hearing their story as well and how they got to where they are in their career, even if it's a different profession, because you could still pick up tips on how, on how to network and, and best ways to groom your resume and things like that. So I, I did do like a wide variety of just, I want to say random volunteer work, not necessarily with civil engineering uh, professional societies, but I kind of branched out into everything. And do you have any advice for anyone trying to get into the water resources field? I think that I gave some good advice about resumes and networking. Um, but as I've said a few times already, I would always say yes to things unless it's something that you really, really don't want to do. Because that's how I got to where I am now. I, like I said, I have no no button. I have a, like a little staples yes button all the time to new opportunities and new things that might come my way because you'll be surprised what it, where it ends up taking you. You just never know. All right, and that's it for my questions for Christina. So yeah. if any of you viewers have any other questions or suggestions for topics, um, feel free to email a repicture with your suggestions. And thank you, Christina, for joining us. Thanks, Catherine. I appreciate it. <laughs>